and today we are going to turn our mini computer into a retro gaming console. I've got the latest Beelink Mini S mini computer, which is actually the first mini computer with the latest CPU N100 that I'm testing here on the channel. Already open it up and we have upgrade possibilities. We can upgrade the RAM, we can add the second SSD 2.5 inches and if we want we can later on replace the M.2 SSD. So a lot to cover on this mini computer but today we are going to see how we can take use of one of these machines to have our retro gaming console. We will keep the Windows 11 Pro in this particular case right over here so we will not replace the operating system so that we can use it for every other single task. And if you haven't activated yet your Windows license don't forget to check out KeysFan where we can get budget official OEM keys at an affordable price and with the coupon code that you can see on screen and also down below in the video description you will get an extra 30% discount. So I'll leave the link down below just in case you want to check that out. Now, really quickly, let's go to Google and search for RetroArch and just download it. We will find for every single platform that there is, or almost every single platform, we will download, we will install in our system like we would with any other app. Now, one of the things that we will require, and I will not be able to give you the link, is the games or also called ROMs. But my tip is that if you go to, to Google and search for retro gaming ROMs, you will find a lot of content and you can download your favorite games for your favorite platform. For example, if you want to play games from the Nintendo, you will find those. If you want for the ZX Spectrum, you will also find those, Mega Drive and so on and so forth. What I did is I've got on my desktop a folder named games which is written in Portuguese, Jogos, and inside that I've got some folders subdivided by platform with the games that I want to play. So this is the way that I suggest you to do. Once we have our games, let's open up RetroArch and we start by going to the online updater and let's do the update of every items that you can see right there on screen, starting with the cores, the assets and so so on and so forth. Once you have all updated, just close RetroArch and open it up again. Once we have it restarted, we will go to the online updates and let's go to Core Downloader. Basically, the Core Downloader is the platform that we want to play our games. In my particular case, as you could see on the images that I showed you, I've got five different platforms, the ZX Spectrum, Mega Drive, Nintendo, Nintendo 3DS. So those are the cores that I want to download. And as we can see, I did download the Nintendo SCNES 9X current, which was the one that I found it worked better for the ROMs that I have, but you can download several of them for the same platform. I also did for the Nintendo DS, Sega Mega Drive, ZX Spectrum and the PlayStation 2. Once we do download the course that we want, let's go to the folder where we have RetroArch installed, which in my case it's similar to yours. Basically we go to the C and then we will find RetroArch and what I do, and this is optional, I just paste my gaming folder inside RetroArch. Now going back to the RetroArch, I'm going to import the games that I do have. And to do so, I just need to go to the RetroArch and click on Import Content, Scan Directory and select the folder that have the games, which in my particular case, it's called Jogos. And we just need to press on Scan and it will take a couple of minutes depending on the amount of games that we have. So if we only have two or three games, it will be very fast. If we have 500 games, then it will take a little bit longer. But the most difficult part, it's done. If we go back to the menu, the main menu, we will see that we already have several games right over there inside every single system that we have downloaded. But we don't have the thumbnails, which is something that looks better and it's easier to identify the game that we want. So let's put in that part. Let's go to the online updater and on demand thumbnails updater let's put it to on and let's press on the playlist thumbnails updater 
Once we do this, if we go back to the several platforms that we have, we will see that we already have the thumbnails for our games. Don't be surprised if you have a couple of games that don't have thumbnail because sometimes the platform is not able to fetch the images from the several servers. There are a lot of guides on the web to achieve this. One of the easiest is probably going to the mode desktop on RetroArch and then just drag one of the images that we can download from the web and put it as a thumbnail. This is the first steps in terms of RetroArch and at this moment you are ready to play your games. You just need to go to the main menu and select which game or which platform and then which game and press run. The first time it will ask which engine or core we want to use. Once we select the core, we can then play our favorite games. And if Super Mario World is one of those, then great, you can start using it or any other game that we used to play when we were kids. And probably if we show to our kids, they will find this a little bit boring and lame but we all know how we feel regarding the beginning of the games, which is not actually this one, but a little bit earlier. That being said, this is it for today. Hope that you guys enjoyed the video and if you did so, don't forget the usual thumbs up right over there, which is really appreciated on this side of the screen. My name is Roberto George, and as always, I'll see you guys on the next one.